Hello. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. How, How are, are you? you? All is well. All uh, is... We're just, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, we're just waiting as people start coming in so I can give them access to uh, interact and be panelists and everything, so. Okay, cool. And you have it enabled so I can share my screen, right? Um, let me do that right now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. <laughs> How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you guys doing? Hey. With your glasses, I better put mine. <laughs> oh, yes. This is my, my nerdy look. <laughs> this is my librarian look. I'm so. <laughs> <laughs> Very smart. I can pretend oh. to be smart. <laughs> Gives that that into a intellectual look. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So everybody's mm -hmm. coming in. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm going to. Okay. I'm just. Well, we had um, <clears throat> how many? Thirty-nine registrants. Okay. All right. That's a pretty good, good number. So we'll see how many at the end, you know what I mean? But. Mm -hmm. And I love your hair. I'm, I'm forgetting your name, but there with you. You got your hair all you. slick. Yeah. I'm like, wow. First time, first time I do it in a while. It looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the ways I will start saying hi and then everybody continues and then the show Annabelle will do the the grand pr uh, introduction of you. Okay, perfect. And, and then, then I'll just you know I'll say my hellos and then I'll go ahead and share the screen and start start the workshop and just go through it. Actually, it's going to be uh, very exciting to express them uh, in writing. Thanks to Gina who is going to teach us no experience necessary to teach us how to do those feelings through poetry. Hi everyone, my name is Catalina Arana. I am the, coordina the coordinator for Multicultural Affairs. Um, I'm also the GA, which stands for Graduate Assistant. So I'm just kind of all over the place here. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Annabelle Haudegui and I'm the Administrative Assistant for the department. I wanted to take the time to thank you all for joining us virtually in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. We had such a great turnout and response to the poetry performance Gina Loring gave two weeks ago. So we're looking forward to today's workshop. In this workshop, internationally acclaimed poet Gina Loring will help us explore how to use poetry and creative writing to walk in your power. It's important for you to know this is a supportive, judgment-free zone. Through short writing prompts, you will explore and anchor your voices and experience the confidence-building tool of transformative poetry. You are more, you're more than welcome to turn on your camera and audio to interact directly with Gina or when sharing thoughts throughout the workshop. Please enjoy and then I will go ahead and let our amazing guest take it away. And Gina, I will make you post right now as well. Okay. okay. Hello everyone, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, give me a thumbs up, yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and that will enable me to show you some slides and kind of just give you a, a, even more of a sense of what we're gonna do to, in today's workshop. So, so the title of the workshop is You've Got the Heart of a Poet. So I believe that everybody has a, an inner poet. So even if you don't think of yourself as a poet, I think you have something important to say for sure. And the next thing is a quick video that I'm gonna share with you that'll just further introduce you to me and to what we're getting ready to do. Thank you. 
I'm going to share a poem. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen just for a moment. And I'm going to share a poem with you just to give you an idea of what I mean when I talk about free verse poetry. So a lot of times when people hear uh, the word poetry or they think about creative writing, they think that it has to fit into a certain format or it has to rhyme. Um, and so this is an example of a poem um, that's in, in the free verse style, which is the kind of poetry that I do and that I'm going to be um, walking you through today in terms of expressing yourself uh, without too much, um, without overthinking it too much. So this poem is called My Grandmother's Grandmother Said. And I just want to dedicate it to, uh, to Breonna Taylor. I'm sure those of you who are following the news know that no, no officers were, uh, were um, indicted for her murder. And that, that's the reality that we're looking at today. Um, and I'm also thinking about my sister uh, who are in, in ICE detention camps and being violated. So I just want to, I just want to just dedicate this piece to women of color, because I think that we are in a, in a place now where um, it's undeniable that our lives are not valued. And it's important for us then to find some kind of strength anyway, um, through that, through that harsh reality. Um, so this is called My Grandmother's Grandmother Said. I was having one of those days when the world feels thick and memories I wish I could forget are front and center, hanging heavy in the air like cement on my chest. I was having one of those days when just being alive feels like a chore, when getting up and out the door is too much. So I prayed. I got down on my knees and my grandmother's grandmother began to speak to me. She said, listen, you are a meteor shower, meant for more than you could even begin to imagine. You are made of light, limitless like the wind, regal as the tallest oak that ever stood. She said, hear me good. You are a shooting star, not for the concrete and traffic, smog and city streets. You are meant for the sky. You are the moon. For only those who survive the darkest night live to tell the story of the stars who live and live and live to be reborn into their own greatness again and again, getting wiser with every year. Be grateful for time. Growing older is a luxury. Ask Anne Frank, ask Trayvon Martin. You're alive, girl, alive, alive on purpose for a purpose. You are here. Through every low moment you've lived through, you are here breathing. Nothing is strong enough to put out the light you got within. That galaxy living in your chest, baby girl, I'll say it again. You are a shooting star made of magic. Never forget, God spoke you into existence, dreamt you into a body, blessed the planet with your presence. You ain't nobody's to claim. You belong to the earth. Your breath, your heart, your spirit lives in the music moving somewhere behind the sun, singing songs of solidarity with the wind, weightless. For queens carry only themselves. No baggage, no heavy hearts. Freedom is yours alone, but you got to claim your throne. Walk steady in your skin. You are the answered prayers of your kin. The ancestors rejoiced at your very existence. You are the open road we could never travel. The limitless midnight of our dreams, divinely designed for a destiny you cannot even imagine. I want you to imagine. Somewhere off the coast of West Africa, Seven generations ago, seven generations ago, seven generations ago, they knew a girl child would be born many moons into the future who would be a gift unto the world. They knew you were coming. They knew you were coming, don't you see? Don't you see? You are who we knew you'd be. We're pulling for you, but we need your help. You believe in God, but you don't believe in yourself. When all along, you are God. That spirit spark is within you. Get up off your knees, girl. Get up off your knees, girl. Get up off your knees, girl. And be. Okay, so. Thank you, thank you. So now I'll go back to sharing my screen. So that's an example of finding your strength in your voice through writing. Okay, so for a moment, let's just reflect. How do we start walking in our power through writing? 
Well, the first step is making the decision to be the, be the steward of your trajectory. What does that mean, the steward of your trajectory? What does that mean to you? When I say those words, what comes to your mind? Our lives are a reflection of our inner narrative. So becoming aware of our internal stance can be transformative. So this kind of goes hand in hand with this idea that there's like our ego and then there's our spirit. And so it's kind of like being self-aware um, of who and who you are within. Um, and, and really getting a sense of your internal stance, like what lenses are you looking through? And are those really you or is that more of an ego? That's what I mean when I say it can be transformative. So you're not just kind of like going on, on autopilot, you're starting to actually be really aware of your own thoughts, your own dreams, your own heart. The second step is being honest with yourself. Are you sitting on your gifts? Do you honor your voice? So I think a lot of times, um, we know in our heart what our, our dreams are, what our skills are, and sometimes um, it can be scary to share them with the world and to be fully, fully self-expressed. So it's something to think about. Are you being honest with yourself? Are you doing, um, are you using your time on the planet in the way that really aligns with your spirit or are you just kind of going through the motions? So I'd like for you to think of a time you wanted to say something, but you didn't. It could be an awkward conversation. It could be something someone said that was a microaggression, something that was hurtful, but you weren't sure how to address it or you felt uncomfortable. So think of that thing. It's usually the first thing that comes to your mind. Now I'd like for you to write down what you would say now if you had that moment back. So I'm sorry, so I forgot to mention in the very beginning of the workshop to go ahead and grab a paper and pen um, and have that handy. Or you can, you can also just write, type it right into a document on your computer. But we are going to be doing some writing. So I'd like you to write down what you would say now if you had that moment back, whatever that moment was. It could just be one sentence, it could be two, it could be three. And you don't have to share this, so feel free to be brutally honest. So here's a secret, don't overthink it. So as we're doing these writing exercises, don't overthink it. Write the first thing that comes to you and allow yourself to be in a free flowing train of thought. A lot of times we get in our own way by overthinking things. Here's another secret, don't force it. You don't have to push the river. That's a very wise saying, a family friend used to say that. She said, don't, you do not have to push the river, it will just flow. So allow yourself to be a willing vessel and everything will flow naturally. So I'd like to introduce you to my AIMS method. And this is just something that I came up with that really kind of breaks down, I think, what makes for really good creative writing. It stands for authenticity, integrity, momentum, and self-care. So this is my AIMS method to creative writing. And this is what I'd like to um, invite you to do today. So the first thing is authenticity. Be yourself, be transparent, be vulnerable. So here's another quick exercise. I would like for you to think of that thing you have never said out loud. Again, it's the first thing that came to your mind. That thing, that insecurity, or that traumatic experience, or that, that powerful thing that you have never said out loud. That is your transformative piece waiting to be written. So if you remember in the intro video, I said that my motto is, look the demon in the eye and suck a punch that MF with a poem. And this is what I mean by that. Actually addressing something that's really hard to say out loud, but there's something so liberating on the other side when you can articulate and give voice to something that's very difficult it takes its power away and it puts the power into your hands. 
So there's a saying that anything you can't say out loud has got its claws in you. So when you say it out loud, when you look it in the eye, you take your power back. Integrity. So right from a place of radical honesty, don't be polite or worry about what other people think. Speak from your heart, no filter. So we are often taught, um, especially as women, to uh, don't make waves, uh, be polite, be nice, be kind, apologize easily. Uh, you know, don't be too bold or too loud. Don't have too many opinions. There's a lot of labels and boxes that society puts us in. And so the kind of writing that I do and the kind of write that I, writing that I encourage you to do really counters all of that. And I say, no, you should have opinions. You should be loud. You should be bold. Your voice should project across the room. Don't worry about being polite. You know, this is, especially this, at this particular moment in history that we're witnessing, the time for being polite is over. It's time to be honest. It's time to speak your truth. It's time to let your presence be known. Next, we have momentum. So I encourage you, if you'd like to, to really dig deep into writing, um, create the space and time for your best creative process. So momentum generates ideas, insights, and creativity. So I encourage you to make a commitment to yourself and stick with it to build a strong vibration around your writing. So what I mean by this is uh, perhaps you want to start journaling. So maybe you can just commit, hey, every, every Saturday afternoon for one hour, I'm going to journal. Or let's say you're working on a short story every Thursday for 30 minutes. You know, I'll put it in my calendar and every, 30 min every Thursday for 30 minutes, I'm going to write, work on my short story. Or Sunday afternoons, that's going to be my time for writing. I'm going to make a commitment to go to the park and just write. So I, I highly encourage you to create some kind of commitment so that you can actually start writing as part of your schedule. That will really help to get the ball rolling, get the energy flowing, and keep it, keep it moving forward. And finally, we have self-care, last but not least. So the kind of writing, this transformative writing that I'm encouraging, it, it is therapeutic. And so you may end up writing about things that are difficult um, and it can be triggering. So you may revisit difficult experiences, address generational wounds, and reconnect with issues that need healing. When I talk about generational wounds, I mean, that could really be its own workshop because there's a lot there. But I'll just say briefly that um, there's an argument that we are not necessarily even thinking and feeling for ourselves, but, but essentially what, what we're doing is we're just repeating the patterns that, that, that our parents, the conversations and the thinking and the patterns of our parents, because they're, they're who raised us, if your parents raised you, um, or perhaps your grandparents, or perhaps your, your aunts and uncle, whoever raised you, um, it, that's, they've given you certain patterns and lessons and ideas and ways of thinking. And so the idea is to kind of begin to think for yourself and feel for yourself and remove some of those um, inherited patterns that maybe don't serve you. Um, but self-care is imperative uh, when you're doing that kind of work to stay grounded. So I suggest checking in with people who love and support you. Let's say you are going to be writing a memoir and you're telling a story of your life. Uh, you may want to tell, you know, your best friend or your spouse, hey, I'm going to be working on some really um, complex, deep stuff. Just FYI, I might need a hug later. You know, just kind of let them know. Um, I also suggest taking breaks. Some, sometimes people get a little too deep into the process and they end up staying in the house, you know, all day writing. Um, I don't recommend that. I, I say take breaks, go to the beach, go, go on a hike, take your dog for a walk, you know, just take a moment um, to kind of um, breathe some fresh air and not be kind of like this in this hermit status. Um, and then also reward yourself with a massage. I'm big on massages and spa days. You know, maybe, maybe we can't do that right now because of COVID, but you certainly can, you know, take a bath or take a nap or do some yoga in your living room. You know, just take a moment to kind of reward yourself and do something that brings peace to you. Okay, so let's do a writing exercise. I would like for you to complete these sentences and you're gonna write the first thing that comes to your mind. Again, do not overthink it. So go ahead and write down, I am. And then you're gonna write the first thing that comes to your mind. I feel, I dream, I pray, I believe. Okay, so I'm gonna give you two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and time you and you're gonna write 
whatever first comes to your mind to complete these sentences. Okay, go ahead and begin. Okay, start wrapping up. Start wrap it, wrapping up the last sentence or two. And remember, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever comes to your mind. Okay, so as you can see at the bottom of the slide, it says share with a partner. So that's for when we do these workshops in person. Normally, I would have you turn to the person sitting next to you and share, um, but obviously we can't do that now. Um, but hold on to these because at the end of the workshop, I am going to open the floor. And if anyone would like to share what they've written, you'll, you'll definitely have a chance to do that. Okay, so here's another writing exercise. I would like for you to complete these sentences again. I am beautiful because, I am strong because, I am powerful because. So go ahead and write the first thing that comes to your mind. Don't overthink it. You'd be surprised what comes out naturally if you just let it flow. So go ahead and begin. <laughs> Okay, take a moment and start wrapping up your last thoughts. Okay, so for this one, 
you're gonna fill in the blanks. The day I was born, blank rejoiced because they, it, he, she, whatever the pronoun is, knew I was blank. So for this one, you can get creative. It doesn't have to necessarily um, be, you know, the day I was born, my mother rejoiced or my father rejoiced. It could be something in nature. It could be the day I was born, the moon rejoiced, or the day I was born, the stars rejoiced, or the forest rejoiced. So you can get creative with the imagery there. Um, because they knew I was, what, going to change the world. They knew I was going to shine and make a difference on the planet. They knew I was special because. So really get creative with celebrating yourself and, and be free with the images. So go ahead and fill in the blanks on this one. Okay, so this writing prompt is a little bit longer. All of those ones that we've done thus far is a little bit more just kind of like think and, and write down what first comes to you. Um, for this one, you're gonna have a little bit more time. And what I'd like for you to do is write a letter to yourself from your guardian angel or an ancestor watching over you. What words of wisdom or support would they give you? So when I say ancestor, this could be someone many generations back who you never met. Um, or it could be someone who you did know who passed. It could be a grandparent or a great grandparent. Um, or, you know, as I said, it could be somebody from many, 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 many years ago down your ancestral line. Um, or it can be from a guardian angel or from, from, from just a, a loving energy. So whatever works for you in terms of that language, whatever re uh, resonates with you. But the idea is to think about what a, a beautiful, high energy being would um, would say to you, someone who looks upon you with unconditional love and light, um, what advice would they give you? What support would they give you? You know, we tend to be very hard on ourselves and we tend to notice our, our, our faults. And so this is an opportunity to just, just love on yourself a little bit. Almost think of it as a love letter to yourself. So what you're going to do is you're going to write at the top of the page, dear, and then your name. So dear, so if I were, if I were doing the exercise, I'd write dear Gina. And then I would just flow with whatever, whatever words my guardian angel or ancestor would say to me. So again, you don't have to share these. So please feel free to be really honest and say whatever, whatever comes naturally. Um, but if you would like to share at the end, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful gift because then you can share with one another and also I can give you feedback in real time so it can be helpful. But you don't have to, there's no pressure. So I wanna make sure you, you just write what authentically comes from your heart. So I'm gonna give you maybe about five to seven minutes for this. Okay, so go ahead and begin now.
Okay, so just take another few minutes. Start wrapping up. Okay, so now at this time, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen for a moment. And I would like to invite anyone who would like to, to share anything that they wrote, anything that you wrote today. So it could be the longer piece, the letter that you just wrote. It could be one of the shorter lines. Um, you'd be surprised what powerful poems can be born just from one line. You know, sometimes all you need is that one uh, that one idea and then it can flow into something much bigger. Um, so something that you wrote today may become something longer um, in the days to come. But I would love to, I would love to hear um, at least a few of your voices. So please don't be shy. This is a no judgment zone and I'm happy to give you some feedback or some suggestions um, if anyone would like to. So you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, okay. I don't mind going. Okay, wonderful. So I don't know why Athena popped in my head. I don't even know if I'm a, related to her or not, but hmm. I've been I'm reading, sure. um, yeah, I don't know, philosophy. So maybe that's why, but um, I am Athena. Oh, dear Kelly, I am Athena and I have come here to tell you to open your eyes a little wider. Even in the darkness, you need to listen to your instincts to rise out of the shadows. Pay attention to those around you. Do they have your best interest at heart? Study more, explore ideas and concepts that are outside of your comfort zone. Your perception of life is like no other, and you need to use that gift for the enlightenment of others. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Mm -hmm. There were some great lines in there. You know what, can you hold on one second? I meant to have a pen here because I like to jot down the lines that stand out to me. Hold on one second. Aha. Okay, so you said um, rise out of the shadows. And you also said something, if you don't mind, can you read it, read it one more time? Sure, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. So I was probably kind of shaky on that one. So if- Oh, my that was good. Dear Kelly, I am Athena and I have come here to tell you to open your eyes a little wider. Even in darkness, you need to listen to your instincts to rise out of the shadows. Pay attention to those around you. Do they have your best interest at heart? Study more, explore ideas and concepts that are outside of your comfort zone. Your perception of life is like no other and you need to use that gift for the enlightenment of others. <laughs> That was good. Okay. You had, you had somebody come through and say some important, uh, that's some important guidance you just received. So 
when you, when she said open your eyes wider so the first thing that came to my mind was was the idea of a third eye right so so in other words we see you know with our our human senses you know we see for, for those who have vision we see we see we feel we hear we touch we taste but what about the things that are not confined to those senses so what can you feel energetically? What can you feel vibrationally that you don't see necessarily with your, with your two eyes, but with your third eye? So that's a powerful idea. Open your eyes wider. So how can you open your eyes wider? By opening that third eye. Yeah, I think with meditation for sure. And I stopped meditating at the beginning of the school year because I've been so stressed with teaching and preparing for everything. Um, but I do think that meditation does help you connect more spiritually like that. Absolutely. Just quieting your mind and allowing those, those messages to come up, you know? Um, yeah. Meditation is, I think the key for sure to hearing your own intuition. Um, and you use that word instincts, right? Instincts, which is connected of course to the word intuition. So what does that feel like that, that would be an interesting direction to go in if you wanted to make the poem longer. What does it feel like when you listen to your instincts? Do you feel it in your gut, like in your belly? Or do you feel it in your chest? Does it affect your breathing? Do you feel it you know, as a, as a wave of just kind of a, a certain knowing or a certain sensation? What, is, what does it mean when you're tuned into your instincts? You know, we all have those moments where you meet someone and you instantly like them and you're like, I don't know why, but I just really like this person's energy. And then there are other times you meet somebody and you're like, I don't know why, but I do not like this person, <laughs> right? Or I don't feel safe in this environment or, you know, just things that, um, that are clear to us, but we don't know why. So it's interesting to kind of explore that a little bit more. What does that feel like to you? And then I love that line, rise out of the shadows. So, what does that mean? What does that look like to rise out of the shadows? It kind of sounds to me like, um, you know, like when you've been holding back, you know, when you've been quiet and she's inviting you to come up, to elevate, to lift your voice, lift your vibration, be seen, you know, like don't be afraid of your own power. Yeah, I think so that's too. a powerful image. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I would love to. I would love to, to to hear more. So I encourage you to add add more to it. You could even tell the story of that moment when you when you begin to rise. You know, I you could say I I felt myself stepping into my power. I felt myself rising to the occasion. I felt what it looked like to look the demon in the eye. And, ooh, realize I was more powerful than it. Right. I That's think a, of like a phoenix or something, and I kept getting this image of like an owl and I guess it's tied to Athena because that's her animal I guess but just mm -hmm. kind of bird maybe <laughs> I don't know yeah so you might want to do a little a little research and see you know see what those images mean and why they came why it came to you so strongly yeah that was great thank you for sharing you're welcome thank you okay someone else we've got yeah, I have a question real quick Yes, of course. Um, since you're a host, do you have your chat open? I was just wondering if the attendees that are on the other side, if you can promote them to panelists. That way, if they wanted to share, they have that option because right now they don't have that option. Um, okay, so if you don't mind, just kind of guide me through it. What do I need to do? Yeah. Um, so do you have your chat open? Yes. Okay, and you see the side that says attendees and then panelists on the top. Do you, does that show on your screen? Uh, I have my chat open and I see that it can either go to all panelists or to all panelists and attendees. Yes. Do you have like the option to see the names of the people under attendees or no? Uh, yes, I see all the names. If okay. Um, on the, like, on their name, like towards the right side, there should be like a little option if you could promote them to panelists and that'll just switch them over to this screen where everyone else is just so if they wanted to share or talk, they have that ability to. Um, everybody has panelists after their name. Um, so I think that may already be the case. 
Okay, it's because, sorry, on my end, it shows that there's six under attendees, and so I wasn't sure. Do you have? Do you want to take a moment and? Yeah, can you make me host for a second? I can do it for you. I'm sorry, everybody. Oh, yeah, no I just want to give everyone the opportunity. Sorry, how do I, how do, I do that? Um, if you go to mine, like under the three dots, just click on it and then make me host really fast and I can do that and then I'll move it right back to you as well. If I go to yours under, okay, under the three dots, make host. Oh, got it. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, everybody. Okay. Okay, you can go ahead and take it away. Sorry, everybody, and thank you for dealing with the technical difficulties. <laughs> no problem. Um, so then I think you have to make me host again, right? Yes, and you're your host again. Thank you. Okay, right, perfect, perfect. Okay, would someone else like to share? I don't mind sharing next. Okay. Um, Dina, um, but... I don't want to make anybody sad or worried or anything. This has just come from a, a background of where I, I started believing in guardian angels. But it says, Dear Dina, I have been watching over you. And no matter how often or how much you try to hurt yourself, I will be there to stop you. Even if you don't see your worth and your greatness, I see how much worth and greatness you are. You are meant to be alive. You are meant to be alive to fulfill others' hearts. Bring them joy. Be their guide in life. I will protect you and give you the strength to move forward, move ahead, and conquer whatever you think you can't handle. I am there to stop you from hurting. Uh, from hurting. Other people need you in this world. I realize that, and now it's time you realize that. You're precious. You're important. You move mountains for others even though you don't see it. Remember, I am there as you walk through hard times, and I will carry you through it. Don't give up. You're not alone and others need you. Mm -hmm. All right, Dina. That was beautiful. Thank you. I really like, like, nobody needs to worry about me now. I'm past all that, but it, it was part of my history. So I thought this is the first time I've ever really talked about it. So it's, it's bringing mm -hmm. up emotions, but I'm not going to let it bother me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Well, I think it's a really powerful image, um, this idea of our, our guardian angels, our ancestors holding the space for us, protecting us. And, you know, as, as we were talking about um, before, about kind of like opening your third eye and kind of being in touch with what you can't see with your human eyes, you know, they say that we only perceive a very small percentage of what's actually happening, like energetically, like even from a scientific standpoint, not even from a spiritual standpoint, there's so many molecules and things happening all around us that we don't see. So what a powerful image that in those moments when we are in a really dark space, we feel the most alone, but that's actually not accurate, right? Because it's very likely that uh, there are these these uh, angels and ancestors and, and God right there with us, you know, like in our, in our space, holding us, hugging us, keeping us lifted. Um, we just can't see it with our human eyes. Right. So what a powerful image. I can just see this beautiful angel standing there like, oh, I got you, girl. I'm right here with you. You yeah, know, that's a totally. really powerful image. Um, yeah. And if we, if we lean into that, that changes how we live. That changes our whole perception, you know, that we are not alone that we're we're walking through life with a whole team you know we yeah, just can't see them with our um i also love the part where you say other people need you in this world you said that and you said it again uh something about other people need you and so what i would love to encourage you to do is write a piece where you talk about your roles who are you to other people so you're somebody's daughter you're somebody's auntie you know, you're somebody's mother or godmother, you're, you're somebody's sister, you're somebody's friend, you're somebody's teacher, you know, whatever roles you identify with. I would love for you to lean into that a little bit. Who are you to other people? Okay. 
what role do you play in their lives? Oftentimes we don't realize how important we are to other people. Yeah. Oftentimes we don't realize there are some people who look up to us, who think of us as, you know, folks that they would call for advice or, you know, dear friends that really have a lot of love for us. And a lot of times we don't realize like without us, that person would be, there would be a missing piece in that person's yeah. life. Yeah. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you could revisit. So in the writing exercise, we said, I am, you know, yes. I am. You know, so you can maybe think about doing the poem like that. Like I am so-and-so's best friend. I am so-and-so's mentor. I am so-and-so's sister. I was there when so-and-so took their first steps. I changed so-and-so's diapers. And now, you know, they're yeah. calling me for advice. You know, I, I was there when so-and-so graduated and I was the first person they hugged, you know? Give us those visual images that really become powerful when you're able to paint the picture, almost like you're showing us like movie scenes. Cool, awesome, thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure. Okay, we've got time for a couple more, one or two more, and then, I'll, and then I'd love to answer any questions if anyone has any. Is there anyone else who'd like to share? Maybe I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? My name is Melissa Johnson. I'm sorry. I don't seem to have a visual. Yes, um, you can. All right. press, you can, if you, if you go to the three dots uh, mm -hmm. and you, and you go ahead and put um, start video, then we should be able to see you. If you click okay. on start video. Oh, there okay. I am. Hi. Hello. Hi. All right. I'll read mine. I hope it's not too long. I wrote, Dear Melissa, a natural road has rocks. It's pitted, dusty, and it hurts bare feet. You are walking now with an unshot heart. Your bare heart is feeling every stone, every pebble, every pebble, and you feel hobbled, um, discouraged to continue in the face, perhaps, of pain. But you cannot stand still. You are martial energy, loving kindness who now feels deplete. But you, but you know your source is not outside of you. Why are you going around banging and knocking on closed windows and doors, being a supplicant? Sorry, when, you're when, you, when you carry at all times. I'm sorry, I don't know why my throat is closing. When you carry at all times an abundant fountain that is ever flowing and replenishes with each and every sunrise. Um, and I said, but, but otherwise, I said, I said, otherwise, I kind of started a conversation with myself. I said, but um, I said, but I live on the planet. I said, otherwise, sometimes I might feel lonely. And something replied, but that's not true. You don't feel lonely or alone. Why do you want someone to profess love to you only in the way you want it? Because I value what I give others and I want something in return. Maybe you are misunderstanding the word, the meaning of reciproc reciprocity. What do you mean then if it's not give and take? It says the natural world gives back in kind. That was it. Mm, Melissa, that was beautiful. Um, what is martial energy? Um, it's kind of like big and just moving forward, kind of, you know, like like martial arts. It's just big and, <laughs> and moving forward. Yeah. Got it. That kind of martial. Okay. Yeah. Got it. You are martial energy. So I love when you said your source is not outside of you. And I would love to hear, um, where is it? Is it in your, is, is it in your heart? Is it in your heart chakra? Uh, is it in your, your crown chakra right, at, right, right above your head? Is it, is it, does it live in your rib cage? Is it, is it flowing through your bloodstream? Uh, where, where does, where do you feel that source within you? Um, and, and, or do you see it, do you see it both internally and externally? Is it in the sunsets? Is it in the, the clouds and the waves in, in reflections of yourself outside of yourself, but it, but it comes from within. So I think that could be a really cool thing to play with of, of when you talk about the sources is not outside of you, it's within you. Um, what does that look like? What does that feel like? Um, and then I love how you said, um, something replenishes with each and every sunrise. What a beautiful image that we're given these daily markers of a new day, of a new birth, of a new opportunity with the, with the sunrise. And so it made me think about how cool it would be if you maybe like personified the sun 
you know, like gave the sun a voice or the sunrise a voice. You know, what, what is, what, what, what do they say, you know, when they awake in the morning? Is, is it their, is it their, is it their, their duty and their job to help to replenish us energetically? And what does that, what does that look like from their perspective? So I think that could be a really interesting poem as well. I also want to recommend um, Jay California Cooper. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She's a brilliant writer, but I have a feeling for some reason that you would, you would dig her a lot. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, J. Period California Cooper is her right. name. She writes short thank stories you. and novels. Beautiful, beautiful, powerful work. So I just want to recommend that to you. Thank you. Okay, so now I just want to um, open the floor if there are any questions. If anyone just wants to ask anything about writing or about my journey as a poet, um, if there's anything that came up uh, throughout the workshop. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Anybody? Or if you want to write it in the chat, you can, and I can just read it um, and answer it directly there. I can have a question. Yes. All right. Um, so after you write all these poems, after you put down all these words, what do you do with them? Well, it depends if you want to share if it's if you if it's something that you want to share publicly or if you just want to keep it to yourself if it was just kind of for your own therapeutic uh, journey which some people prefer you know just to keep it to themselves in a journal but if you want to share it what you can do is uh, you can go to an open mic you know there's lots of venues where people are invited to read their work and read their poetry I do recommend doing that if you want to share because something about being in that, in that environment with other people sharing their work as well, it kind of gives you permission to be even more unapologetic with sharing yours. Um, and sometimes you can get feedback as well if you want to workshop it. You can also, um, you know, there are writing circles. There are people who get together and share their work and give each other feedback. So you can also workshop your work um, in that kind of an, an environment. Um, or if you want to get it published, um, Poets and Writers Magazine has a really good online resource. If you just Google Poets and Writers with the and sign, so don't spell out A-N-D, just put the and sign, Poets and Sign Writers. They have um, a really cool database where you can put in, you know, whether it's a short story or a poem, and they tell you all the different competitions you can enter it into, different publications you can submit to, what the deadlines are, if there are any fees. So if you want to begin to explore getting your work um, published in like online journals and that kind of thing, or entering them in contests, you can do that as well. So it's really up to you if it's something that is just for you, or if you want to share it at an open mic, or if you want to start looking into getting published, um, that's available to you as well. So it just depends what, what you what you feel, you know. But what I started out with is just sharing with friends. You know, I just be like, I just wrote this thing, you wanna hear it? You know, just started sharing with friends and then that led to going to open mics and reading at, at various um, poetry spots and that led to slamming competitive poetry, that led to showcases, um, and then to, to submitting for publication. So it just depends, you know, how far you wanna go with it. Did that answer your question? Yeah, um, I noticed that it was kind of feedbacking, so that's why I um, stopped the mic. But yeah, I was just kind of curious what you do with it, because I have poems that I've had for the years and didn't really, they're stuck in a corner of my room. Oh, well, uh, you might want to let them come on out, be seen, be heard. Maybe, maybe you want to think about uh, starting to submit, you know, for publication, you know, or Mostly you could... They, I, been doing this since I was really little like since I first started to learn how to write I wrote poetry so that's why oh cool okay well if there are no other questions um, I'll share my screen one more time just to um, share with you so I teach other online courses, kind of longer versions of, of what we did today um, called Soul Speak courses. So I invite you to go to my website, GinaLoring.com, and you can go to the contact page and join my mailing list. I don't send out um, emails very often, but every now and then I'll send out an email if I'm going to open another online course or if there's something that, that's going on, some kind of an online reading or a presentation. 
and be brave with your life. That is what I leave, leave with you today, hopefully. Um, be brave with your life. Do not be, uh, do not be apologetic uh, with your voice. So I invite you to also stay in touch via social media. So um, I'm most active on Instagram and my handle is at Gina Starlight. So I encourage you to follow me on, on IG or on Twitter as well at the Gina Loring. Um, on Facebook, it's just my name, Gina Loring. So please feel free to keep in touch that way. I've got lots of poems and, and music and things of that nature up so you can check out more of my work as well. And that's gonna conclude the workshop. So thank, thank you guys you. so much. Thank Gina, you very thank much. You. Yes, thank you for that motivational workshop. Uh, before we all leave, is it possible for us, or I wanted to capture the moment, kind of, it was Gina's idea last event as well, and I thought it was pretty neat. If you guys don't mind turning on your cameras, if you can, or would like to, and just for me to take a screenshot of everybody that attended, just for the memory, and to post it on our social media, and we would really appreciate it. Thank you, y'all. Okay, you guys are amazing. Gina, thank you again for that amazing workshop. My pleasure. Wait, did you already take the picture? No, no, I'm with oh, Okay, I, I didn't hear it. One, two, three. I don't think I was ready. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think, okay. So, right, I'm going to do it on three. So, it's a smile for the camera. One, two, three. Okay, I believe I got it. Um. If you guys would like, please register and tune in to our next event for Hispanic Heritage Month. It's called Tres Vidas, and it'll be Monday, September 27 p.m. It's a live show of three pre-recorded scenes that'll portray the lives of legendary Latin American women, Mexican painter Frida Kahlo, Salvadorian activist Rufina, and the Argentine poet Alfonsina. You will interact directly with the producer and the actress of the show. Um, so thank you again, and we'll see y'all soon, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Bye. Thank you. Thanks again for yeah. having me. You guys have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Take care. Thank you, Bye. Gina. Appreciate you. My pleasure. My pleasure. It was Bye. awesome. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. You, Gina. My pleasure.